Hey, Alex. Hey, Nick. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. And I want to be clear <laughs> about s- that. I can see you. I can see you. Guys, so if, uh, see what we're doing right now is we were recording a cold open over video. We're playing around with this because, uh, you know, coming up, not not now, you have a little while, right? You have a little while, but coming up, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be taking the, uh, what are we doing? Are we doing this visually? Oh, we're, el- we're elevating. I see. That's what he says. I feel something, like. Something, something Nike, something we're, yeah. Nope. No nope. pushing it to the limit. Pushing it to the limit. It's so it's so weird seeing you like in in your <laughs> how you talk. Yeah. Once you stop going from casual to performative, you like get up on the microphone and you're like, That's right, that's right, that's right. You wanna you wanna give them a co- you know, it's like coffee talk, you know, you want coffee talk. <laughs> coffee talk. <laughs> I've, i we're adding apparently we're gonna add a video element or or you know, go on TikTok or some shit. I don't know what the fuck we're doing. This is- Exclusive TikTok. <laughs> can you imagine this goddamn podcast on tiktok I well, how, can. Would, how would that work what would we do 20 minutes of movie talks and then sea shanties this and is what i think tiktok is. this is all I, I know of tiktok is people like to sing sea shanties just singing sea shanties i th- i think that's precisely what we do is sing she shan't sea shan't i can't even say that word sea shanties sea shanties it's also funny because our our guest today her name also starts with a sh shant shasha would be great at she shanty shasha was shasha was great she this is the first time we're recording our cold open in in the in the future That's right so uh, this is in the future so we recorded this with her a couple weeks ago yeah yeah, uh, yeah. i think two or three days after biden was elected which yeah. we reference and we're like you know what we need to be more timely with this. We need people, people need to, you know. The people need to know. And know she came on need. and she was great. She was so great uh, that we, we made it into a two-parter. So this is the first of two parts with our dear Sasha Hutchings. Um, you know, I, I, I would prep you for the episode. The only thing I would really say is just know that like when she came on, she was already at a 10. So we literally just started recording. Like we didn't. There was no prep. There was no like get into it. It was just this like this is oh, going to no. be the weirdest transition we've ever had from it's this to the weird. song to like mid conversation. Yeah, just just Sasha. know just know that we're not there's yeah there's no prep for this. We're just going to go straight into it. As soon as the song's over, you're going to hear a lot of laughing and bullshit and 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 I mean I'm not sorry, um, but uh you know this is like the new little Nike Justice. So, uh, little, <laughs> little Nikes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> like what? That's it. <laughs> that's somehow, somehow that's it. Little Justice, little Justice, little Justice. Fuck yeah. This is pointless. <laughs> like we've already been talking for like 20 minutes there's no point like, like ladies and gentlemen welcome to little justice i just want to be clear like we were talking for a good 10 minutes before we started rolling some really this. good content too some Who great was? content you know no, it was just the west wing it was just talking about the west wing again like which is every great single episode gets back con- to some shut- episode of the west wing why don't west you shut wing, the fuck the jackal yeah. the jackal the okay jackal. so the jackal's a song on the West Wing. When is it's a West song Wing. that it's what it, CJ lip syncs to the Jackal when yes, they have a victory. Does. And I was asking this question, what is the victory? I can't remember what they uh, have just do, achieved. Do I need to look it up? I think I need to look it up. Hang on. Uh, that's yeah, what I was trying to do. Know. And then I all of a sudden I wasn't a part of the podcast anymore. Yeah, you you, you Sasha disappeared. <laughs> By the way, our our guest today, we haven't even introduced her. It's 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 Sasha Sasha Hutchings uh, is our guest today. <laughs> AKA the jackal. (laughs) AKA the jackal. (laughs) She's here. Uh, Welcome to chaos. Welcome to pure and utter chaos. I'm I'm on. I'm on. I'm on westwing.fandom.com, and they are saying CJ is persuaded by her coworkers to perform the song, Um, the jackal. uh, But they don't give the context. They just say that she she did it. This is what's like a normal West Wing thing that could happen. They win like a lawsuit. Do they no, a, a bill gets passed. I don't know. I don't know. It would be a bill. It would be a I've bill. I've seen like four episodes of The West Wing. It was either a bill or it was it that they put somebody on the bench. It wasn't. It was yes. Maybe I it think was, it, was, it was a Mendoza. It, was on it the might have been Mendoza. Bench. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was Mendoza. 
that he yeah, got. Yeah, because I feel be- like Toby's really happy and like it's he's like yes. weirding everyone out during that episode. God, yes, I'm, in fact, I'm reading. I'm reading this now. Show. It's yeah. Well, you know who's not is Alex, and that's the prop. <laughs> it's yes. it's uh yeah. It was it like was your on- two favorite shows in the world. I have really no idea what you're ever talking about in regards to what's, the what's wire the, what's and the, the west what's wing the, like i've seen like bits and pieces of both of them i get the general idea but like <laughs> you like what? almost every day you probably watch an episode of one of those two shows oh, alex I, I what's fo- your give it give your synopsis of the wire yeah. and the west wing <laughs> <laughs> through through my eyes that's a challenge. Yeah, through through Nick's eyes. Well, so so the why the wire to me, I didn't realize. But Nick, you were explaining it last time. Actually, like every season examines a different facet of of like life in Baltimore, working class. Is life, that correct? Is that correct? That is correct. Like, like a like an up close examination of of the different aspects of life in in like urban Baltimore. Yes. Okay. So it's not Agreed. just a cop show, then, right? Like it's, no, it, it's it is. Like, it's it's like a it's like a, a a domestic uh i was gonna say excavation like a it's like an archaeology i mean truly it's like it's like i mean it's a journal it's like a, it's like you're reading the newspaper but it's yeah. live it's live <laughs> but chaos, like the wire chaos, itself chaos. refers to the wire they they wear right like the wire yes. that they have set up which is a <laughs> cop show thing you can't just start screaming chaos into your <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sasha, yes, you have. You don't even know. Chaos, 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 chaos. Oh God, like, what's happening? The best part is, guys, that Sasha. We didn't prep Sasha in any way. Not at all. He literally said, "Pick a movie and come on," and like that's just what's gonna happen. We'll, like, we'll just see what happens. We'll just, yeah, we'll you just, were like, ask chaos. any question. You were like, if you have any questions, let us know. And I was like, but th- I have no context for questions. Questions. Like I, That's there's nothing. There's I haven't even been given enough information to ask another question. You didn't oh. get the spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't. You did. Did, you, did we not send you the contract? Shit. <laughs> What's the con- See, chaos. We- <laughs> chaos. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. No, but it's uh, <laughs> the wire. That is that is an accurate representation of the wire, Alex. Now, now the West Wing. What do you think the now West the Wing West is? Wing. What is it? Uh, well, Aaron Sorkin. You know, needs some alone time. Oh my God. <laughs> like Aaron Sorkin needs some alone time. It's just him hanging out. It's, it's just, just Aaron Sorkin. Aaron, it's, it's like Aaron Sorkin's like imagining of what politics is actually like. We we talked about this a little bit when we did our politics episode. Yes, we did. When I pick when I watched Dave for it, because like in light of the last <laughs> four years, it's completely like like shined light on how not organized it actually all is. Yes. Um, and how like, like, like usually you think that everybody behind the scenes is like hyper intelligent. Everybody is like a Harvard law PhD, like, you know, yes. executing these, these 5d chess moves or whatever. And then you realize like a lot of people back there, not, not actually, not the know? brightest, <laughs> not, not, not the, the brightest. brightest. So yeah. like sh- shows like the West Wing, especially Aaron Sorkin, who has this, this, uh, penchant for like emotionally driving everything up. Like you remember, um, the newsroom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, after after like they killed Bin Laden, maybe was the plot point, <laughs> oh and God. they got up on the plane and announced it with the music playing. Like, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we got like he just like yeah. blows these things way out of proportions. Like, uh, is, he, it, is it that exciting? You well, say here's, out of proportion. I and we would say, say <laughs> just right. <laughs> In into perfect. hitting the perfect <laughs> balance, yeah. the perfect balance. It's so funny because I think I think that he truly does. You know, yes, he does emotionally charge moments. I would say on the West Wing, however, I think. And Sasha, tell me, tell me what you think about this. I would say that the genius of the show is that it doesn't like. It really isn't like exciting beyond like except for like maybe the season finales which always get way out of hand um but like <laughs> like they are truly that is that, that is when you'll have a plot that's like actually ridiculous yeah, you're right. it's but I ridiculous love that. yeah it is yeah. Kind of ridiculous. It, it gets it, it got a little more ridi- i'll tell you where it went off the rails for me a little bit and oh, being on my please. maybe fourth pass through this uh series yes. I'm, yes. i've really nailed it down to when the first daughter gets kidnapped I just, uh, I'm yeah. really not a fan of a kidnapping, and yeah. I really think that it it brings me to scandal when Olivia Pope was kidnapped, and yeah. I don't, I just have yet to see a believable kidnapping. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, How did, wait, so the, the the first daughter played by gets, Elizabeth Moss. Okay, Elizabeth played Moss by gets Elizabeth kidnapped. Moss. Yeah, Elizabeth she gets Moss. kidnapped from her graduation party. Now, Sasha, um, she, now <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but please, if you're going to talk about the story, you need to talk about her French boyfriend. I was just kidding. Because there. he's... Was he in on it? Well, Sasha, go ahead. Ye- sort of. He wasn't trying <laughs> to get her kidnapped. You know, guys are never trying to ruin your life. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, happen. so like he's, he's the reason that she gets put into a position where yeah. she can get kidnapped yeah i don't know i think that that blame should square fall squarely on on secret service at that point like a french no. boyfriend should never be in a position in the first place to Listen, open her up you to know kidnapping. they have to if if they're if they're too close then she won't trust them then she'll be trying to dodge they have to give her a perimeter you know their, and their when, job is to secure the perimeter secure the perimeter and when your secret service is played by <laughs> tay diggs that's when you really Amazing. know that it's not Amazing. gonna really work out do you know what I'm mean? getting flashbacks of like first kid with Sinbad right now. That's precisely yeah. what this should feel like because like, that is oh, the I, I want to go to the mall, but Secret Service yeah. won't let me. I'm no, going to slip liter- them. Alex, <laughs> and like- you have a- go ahead, <laughs> Sasha, say it. Okay, but like the first, like Tay Diggs is her Secret Service. Like he's the head of her Secret Service. He is. It. He's all she but has. He's- but he's also like you get introduced to him, and the first thing that happens is another blonde woman like body slams him to prove that <laughs> she is like capable of defending the first daughter. Yes. So like the first, it's not only this beautiful short chocolate man Tay Diggs, <laughs> but he also gets body slammed by this body blonde slam. woman like within the first just like, p- few completely scenes. put in his place. So you know from the get go, like he You're is like, probably okay. not not the one to be. And then he lets the first daughter get kidnapped. Can you imagine if any time in American history, (laughs) the child of the president was kid? Who kidnapped him? Was it like an international intrigue kind of thing? It was extremists. There were some extremists. 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 Extremists, They never really give you like a whole thing. It becomes a big like to do as as you know. I guess it would. Uh, But it (laughs) just like imagine if imagine if Antifa grabbed Don Jr. Like (laughs) what would happen? You know. I really think. If, <laughs> let me tell you, I actually I'm gonna bet dollars actually, to cents that that, that <laughs> happened. I think it happened. I, I Tifa grabbing Don Jr. Don Jr. and, and Tifa he got loved together, it. made a decision to to grab Don Jr. <laughs> yeah, he said he they said, got him back at HQ now. I will willingly go. But yeah. but yeah, it was you know Tay Diggs, and then and then the best part, Alex, is Tay Diggs. Once we get to season five, never heard from again. Never seen. As, yeah, again. fired. Never seen again. Fired. <laughs> yeah, <As> though, <laughs> he's definitely fired. He's, he's definitely been let go. Fired. He's been let go from the show. He's been and, let go uh, from from law enforcement. Period. But, yeah. But but Sasha, this is this is actually interesting because you know this was also the last episode that Aaron Sorkin ever wrote of The West Wing, right? So like. Because I I have I get the feeling that this was like the biggest middle finger to, to the yeah West. Like, I was gonna say the kidnapping was his last that last episode that he wrote that he wrote he because he didn't do he was gone for yeah five. oh so it was like you guys stole this show from me kind of is he the I daughter? he's Does like he I'm gonna set you guys up for <laughs> failure I li- <laughs> I think he literally said write yourself out of this one you fuck faces do you know what I mean that's a, I, th- I literally think he was like I'm gonna give you like an impossible situation yeah. and now good luck maintaining the show <laughs> yeah i kind of love and, that and that's what happened because season five is trash they are <laughs> in full it really is Rick well because I, because sorkin jumped the shark for them he yeah took the boat jumped, jumped, the, jumped shark, the shark and then swam away and swam away and and it all comes back to rob Lowe. that that is that is the little <laughs> known secret i'm and not i'm not even joking it it legitimately uh, you know, let's let's make this a full West Wing podcast right now. Some West Wing tea for you guys. West Wing gossip, yeah, gossip, <laughs> gossips. Um, so here's what I heard from from from, from the sources. <laughs> Someone I, had I, told I, me. Well, wh- and I'll tell you who told me. I was in Milwaukee doing doing the show uh, that shall not be named about the rapping founding fathers, and uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> there was a there was a <laughs> me and my buddy Fergie saw that uh, at the Jewish Community Center in town, uh, Rob oh, right. Reiner. And Aaron Sorkin would be speaking, and so we went, <laughs> and Ooh. and it was and this was what was alluded to. What was alluded to was that there was an actor on contract, Rob Lowe, uh, who had an understanding from the beginning 
that. Uh, and and, and if, if, if I'm wrong, please someone correct me. I, I, I'm just telling you what I heard. But that Rob Lowe was not the easiest to work with on set, that there was a lot of tension surrounding Rob Lowe, that um, it came down to that Aaron Sorkin had gotten to a position where he was like, look, I don't, I don't want to work with this guy anymore, so you're either going to make a choice between Rob Lowe or me. And he apparently comes into work the next day and like they call him in for a meeting and they just were like, Aaron, we are so thankful for the four years you've given us. Like it really has been magical. Like he truly <laughs> thought that they were going to, cho- it's Aaron Sorkin. Why would you not choose Sorkin? But they chose Rob Lowe. And what's amazing about that is Rob Lowe did not stay. <laughs> he left. Rob Lowe, Rob Lowe no, bounced. Really? So you lose Sorkin. At the same time or did they get an extra season out of him? time. So you Funny. lose Sorkin and Rob Lowe in one fell swoop. That's really funny. I mean, at that point, though, Sorkin, you know, he was probably important, but not like a public figure. Like if you're trying to sell a fifth season of a show and you lose your big star, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, yes. but you feel you it. Know, you like, feel it. You feel, you feel it. it after that. Oh, you, you feel, feel it for it. sure. You always and, feel it. And in retrospect, you yeah. know, you look back and yeah. Well, but, but they yeah. were just trying to get renewed for another season, you know, and without Rob Lowe, they probably wouldn't have done and that even then you knew because because Sorkin's scripts were just I mean tr- when you when you get a chance to watch this Alex it, it it's like what the newsroom should have been for yeah. its whole run like it really is just a special show and I like the, the newsroom a lot yeah the difference in once Sorkin leaves like it takes them a, a truly a whole season to find their feet now, now once they find their footing once we get into the the Matt Santos of it all Sasha now we're back in play. Now we're Matt going. Matt Santos green. is great. Yeah, Matt Santos. It, you really once they're in the end, the the final stretch is a strong one. Yeah, it's a strong one. It's a. Real... I don't know that I wanted like after you know as the show ended, I didn't necessarily want to West Wing it with President Santos. I wasn't. Did really... you not? I didn't. Not... I re- really? I didn't. Yeah. No. Interesting. Mm, M- Matt I Santos, was... Alex, played by the great Jimmy Smits. Uh, just to give you some aesthetic. My mom aesthetic. loves Jimmy Smith. I love Jimmy. Yeah. My mom, everyone's mom loves Jimmy Smith. Yeah. He was like, what, one one year, like, like he's like, he's like her thing that she loves. So what, one year we, we got a picture of Jimmy Smith and we framed it and we stuck it on top of the Christmas tree where the star should go. Oh my God. That's he really cute. Our, our Christmas star, Jimmy Smith. I'm going yeah. to do that every year. But Sasha, I'm sorry. I cut you off. What no, no, saying? no. I, I just you, you were saying, uh, as it ended, that you were willing to explore a Santos presidency. I would have, I would have, I would have loved to see. I would have loved to see what that like because they set it up really well. I'm not ruining anything for Alex, but his cabinet is is great. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's just a great. It's, he got he got a great crew. He got a great staff there. I would love yeah. to see what that what happens with that staff going forward. Um, you know, I think I think they 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 got enough to bump heads and be be their asshole selves and whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, but yeah, interesting. You know, interesting. The Santos presidency. I mean, who who knows how? Who do you? Let me ask you this, Sasha. Because San, so so Alex Santos is very much mm-hmm. the Obama of the West Wing world. Sasha, mm-hmm. who can who comes after Matt Santos? Is it is it Hoynes? Is Hoynes the Trump <laughs> of the West Wing world? Do we get eight is years it of Santos? Hoynes? No, I think it's that guy, the president who had the dog, the one who um, oh, took shit. over the. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Who yeah, took I know over you're the about. office when he had to. When he had to because his daughter was kidnapped. Oh yep, his daughter. So oh, he John had Goodman. to. Yeah, it's John yeah, Goodman. Yeah, John Goodman. John Goodman yeah. played. I forget the name of the senator or the. No, he played the. It was like the, the secretary, pr- speaker of the yeah, house, speaker of the right? house. Yeah, because he was they, third in line. Because Hoynes yeah. had screwed up. We're just yep. going. This this just a rabbit hole, ladies no, and gentlemen. This, this has been the West Wing podcast, <laughs> the West Wing uh, Weekly. Next week, and, and it's not e- it's not even West Wing <laughs> Weekly. It's just Nick and Sasha remember the West Wing. <laughs> like, it's just not even which really that. is like in this show. Any like basically anytime Nick gets a microphone, it we just talk. To it's all becomes the West Wing. What? Let me ask you, Alex. What else is there to fucking talk about? Do you know what I mean? Like, what else is there? <laughs> like, like, let's just find you a new, just a show. You only have to watch it one time. I know you like to watch. You need to watch. I whole tried shows. series seven to ten times <laughs> to fully I, appreciate that. I've tried. You Sasha, tried shows. No, Sasha, you tried Bridgerton. My wife loves Bridgerton. Oh, I went. I I was in it. I didn't just try it. it. I finished the meal. Yeah. You ate the. You 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 licked the plate. I finished the plate. I won't say that I licked it. I left a crumb or two. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's fair. Left a crumb Listen, out there. it was like it was really pretty. 
Um, the actor who plays uh, the guy, I can't even remember the names. Honestly, it was very the pretty. Duke. And the Duke. The Duke. Yes, yes the yeah. Duke is hot. <laughs> like, just, it's really ridiculous. And he's hot in a way that, like, I was like, wow, he's really attractive. And then I, like, had a little rebellious moment where I was like, I'm not going to do this. Like, I'm not just going to sit here and swoon over this guy. And then, like, by episode three, I was like, yes, you are. Like, just do it. Just have fun with it. Like, he's, that's what he's <laughs> you have here to, like, for. Allow yourself to enjoy it (laughs) this is what he's here for like it's but uh it was really fun um i will say towards the end and specifically the final episode like the the series finale or not series uh season finale i just felt like it was every example of the most toxic like codependency you can have with a significant other this. as Could a you, woman yeah get more into this i've actually heard that that that's a, a, a popular opinion on this like it really was just not, not yeah a healthy so thing. he has had the duke has had a troubled childhood um very interesting in that this is queen charlotte's england so and queen charlotte charlotte is black and it's um as though she has sort of given titles to some prominent black families and so you have the duke you have lady um dan some there's another black uh lady in the movie and or the series so you have these like affluent black people but um the duke has had a troubled childhood his mother died um giving birth to him his father was estranged and he had a stutter and his father was ashamed of him He's like sworn that he would never have children to spite his father. Um, and so he marries. He says he's never going to marry because he can never have children. But there's a whole lot of drama. I won't go through all of it. Okay. He ends up married to this white woman, obviously. And <laughs> as you do. As you as do. As you do. And she is very naive as and it's very interesting um, the way they show these young ladies who really have like no idea how sex works, how procreation works. And her mother just sort of throws her to the wolves and it's just like, have fun in marriage. okay? and does not explain how sex works, does not explain how pregnancy works. So she's in this marriage just trying to very much embrace, you know, what her role in society is. She's sort of an example of a woman who it's not that she's really fighting against, you know, being put out on a meat market to sh- as, as a, not a, as a meat potential market. wife. I mean, like she's being, you know, it's the season, like it's the season to be married. She's some well seasoned meat. It's ready meat to season. Be- it's meat season where you meet someone and marry him. No. And um <laughs> show probably wouldn't have done as well with that title though. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it's next meat time. season. No, have you, have you seen meat season? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it should be called the drama is so dynamic <laughs> are you season. ready to go meeting like, let's, like <laughs> just really crazy oh my god the so, first episode is just called medium rare <laughs> well, well. and the last episode is well done well <laughs> like, done yeah exactly <laughs> well done this is well fucking done, trash <laughs> continue talking Sasha. i'm so sorry So she's just embraced all of this. And so she takes it upon herself to make this marriage work. But because this man has had this troubled childhood and this terrible, you know, idea of his his relationship with his father and his idea of who he could be, he's like classically like has no idea how to navigate through it emotionally, no idea how to like, you know, nothing he's doing is making sense. They're not having the arguments or even the conversations or fights that they should be having just trying to work this out. No one knows how to talk to each other. And then it just sort of like falls into this like false romanticism that we're very used to seeing from that period of like what it was like for people to meet and get married. But, you know, as a woman, I'm like, oh, my God, like, this is so terrible. She's just it's she's trying to solve the problem of this marriage. They end up almost estranged on like the the brink of estrangement because she realizes that he's lying to her about how he can't have children or the difference between can't and won't have children. Um, Damn. Yeah. And and he's sort of like lied to her, but he you know, it was like, well, I didn't know you didn't know. Like, I wasn't responsible for teaching you the birds and the bees. And so they're going to live separately. And she has this conversation with her mother finally where she's, you know, told her you haven't 
prepared me for anything. And I think we're going to separate at the end of the season, the meeting season. The meet season. (laughs) The meet season. And her mother gives her this pep talk that's basically like, your father and I loved each other very much, but we didn't, it wasn't perfect. We had hard times, but we made it work because we chose each other. And the daughter says to her, I am trying, which you have seen her trying. You've seen her put forth the effort. You've seen her put up with this like very broody man. And she's putting forth the effort and she, the mother says, you're a Bridgerton, you can do anything. And Yo was just like, for me, that was my moment of just, no. But is this, can I, can I ask you, is this, is this, is this speech given in a context where we are supposed to root for what the mother is saying? Or we, we understand that the mother is pushing her into a very bad no, you're supposed to root for her oh, the mother no, and what she's no, saying. No. Because what then happens is basically she goes to the husband. Everyone leaves the party. There's like some dancing in the rain, you know. And then she says to him, I, um, you know, I love you. I know you don't think you're worthy of love. I know you don't think you can do this, but I do and I blah and I love you and I love us and I want to do this and then she leaves like she gives the speech that's just like I know you're an emotionally unavailable terrible like terribly depressed human who doesn't know how to find his way out of this but I I can love you out of it and I'll do it and you're just like no sis you can't it's impossible they leave it on like well no they no it works out he comes around and they live happily ever after or at least you know happily to the end of the season it's a lot lie so it's the so the show is a lie <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah but it's a pretty one yeah but it's a pretty one with a really hot guy that's so, what i thought it was like what's the age range here because i was looking at it like okay this is just like for like late teen kind of thing like it's definitely a late teen piece. like it's definitely a sexy period piece but i um am a woman in her 30s and my mother <laughs> is a woman in her 60s <laughs> and let me tell you the whole house was watching it Okay. My, okay. So. my. Let me tell you a little. I want to tell you. You know. Now I've never watched. I've not watched the meat season. But I want to tell you a little story about. <laughs> <laughs> I've not. I've not watched the. I've not been to the butcher shop recently. But I, I want to go. <laughs> They've got some good meats. They've got. I, I, I hear they got some good meats. Uh, I. I was talking to me and my. Me and Sarah were FaceTiming my mother, and uh, she had just watched uh, Bridgerton, and was so yeah. excited about the the episode where I guess he teaches her to to masturbate. Uh, Love yeah. that. And uh, now I have never heard my mother use the word <laughs> masturbate. How was that for you? <laughs> it was well for both me and Sarah. I think we just kind of looked at each other like this is not what yeah. we want. We don't want. This. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we yeah, we there's don't a want lot this. of sex. There's a lot of sex in the in in the in the series. And I would say. Um, my sister decided pretty on that we were no longer going to watch it with my mother. Great. I think it was about yeah, this pro- two and a half smart. episodes and she was like, we can't do this. Yeah. My, See, my wife and I have, have this nice comfort zone with stuff like that where like we like, like we'll go as far as, as down to Abby, right? That's like our, <laughs> that's okay. the threshold. Like they get into it, but they don't really get into it. And like, it's not really that it, it's more about watching period, like watching these people in this like kind of pristine time and we just finished uh and with an e which oh, had the yeah. same kind of thing where it's like they get right up to talking about these important things and showing you think like like yeah. breaking through what you think that period was like and showing you real human stuff but not actually like yeah it's not like gratuitous sex scenes it's not like going yeah. overboard so it's like at one point the script did go there at one point they had a very real conversation and then in some stage of editing or rewrites, they were like, we can't just, can you make this palatable? It's not worth (laughs) it. Can you make this network palatable and move on? So, you know, and it's a Shonda Rhimes show. There's, there's, there's some salt in there. There's, you know, there's some salted meat in there, but (laughs) at the very, (laughs) salted (laughs) meat. You know, but that's, that's, it, that's it, how they used to package it on the ships. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It's this metaphor has uh, gone off the rails. <laughs> no, we're, we're we are it. exactly I'm trying to keep no, no. it aligned in my head. There's it's just no getting some really disturbing images in my head. Of, <laughs> I tell you, when we okay, knew the when, meat is the people and they're salted, then what are we talking about? Yeah, <laughs> exactly what we're supposed to be talking about. And chaos, that chaos, 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 movies, chaos, 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 chaos movies is what we're supposed to be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are. This is listen. When 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 we knew when when we were like, oh, we should get Sasha on here. I knew from the very beginning that this would be a two parter. I knew that this that we would not get to the topic for quite some time. So I'm happy to just like you say we're off the rails. Let's let it ride. Do you know what I mean? Let Let's it ride. Let it ride. Let's Next see stop. Meet 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 town. Meet oh, town. I'm just gonna <laughs> stop meet town. town. Meet, meet town. town. Now, My now, theory lives there. <laughs> Guy Fieri loves it in Meat Town. He's all Google about. Meats. <laughs> oh, God. Po- Postmates. <laughs> so one thing. So it's it's so interesting to hear you talk about this, Sasha. Like, uh, so like Alex, what is your Bridgerton? Like this, you know, like what? what well, is that's what I'm saying. Is right now it's Anne with an E, man. We just finished. So that's it. that's it for it's, you. It's three seasons of Anne of Green, Anne from Green Gables, but like. <laughs> It's. It, I was. I was hesitant going in. I was like, ah, it's like okay. It's made for a slightly younger audience. It's like whatever. But they really the production value on the show is unbelievable. The way yeah. it's shot, the performances, the everything. There's one of the one of the main guy, like the the kind of boyfriend character through it is is terrible. But everybody else is not only are the performances good, but the characters like there's a lot of dynamic. They deal with a lot of stuff like childhood trauma and abuse and on and Anna Green Gables and wow Anna Green. Yeah, it's like wow. Because she's she's like an abused orphan, right? Who doesn't know where she comes from. She's like the most positive person in the world. She's always talking about her imagination and all this stuff. Oh, shit. Um, but she's got PTSD straight up and and comes into this family who doesn't really want her. They like, and I think that's the real book too. They like, they, they send for an orphan boy to help on their farm, Green Gables, and they get her instead. Um, and so the first few episodes are them just weighing whether they want her or not. So she's come, she's like this bright presence, right? She sees the magic and everything, but she's also severely traumatized. Um, Damn. and it, it balances this. And over the course of three seasons, it, it engages, uh, with homosexuality. It engages with politics. It engages with, uh, like a woman's place in, in the hierarchy and with mm. the native people and with, uh, it, it, it covers basically everything, but it never, it never feels like they're trying too hard. Like they keep it really uh, like ground. The drama feels natural. Um, it's oh, it's surprisingly gotcha. good. And then they canceled it because uh, the the Canadian uh, company pr- production company that was making it didn't like the deal Netflix was making with them. They said Netflix basically like took too much money or didn't give enough money for what the production Damn. was. So they canceled it. Damn. But well, and with an E, so good. And with, and an, e. with an E. All right. I it sounds like a thing I'd get into, honestly. Yeah. And it's easy. Like everybody can watch it. Like there's it's there's not sex scenes. There's not too much violence. Like it gets just dark enough, but never really like it's it's pretty accessible. So it's right. That's there. what I really yeah. like. My sister asked me, we were talking about shows, and I really don't like dark shows, and I don't get into like horror movies. I really don't get into thrillers. Um, and my sister was like, wait, the West Wing is upbeat. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you? <laughs> yes, it is. It yeah, is I'm, I'm finding I don't want dark these days. Like after the last few years, like we, we tried <laughs> yeah. to watch Snowpiercer. They made a TV show based on the movie Snowpiercer about like yeah. class oh, no, no, no. warfare on a post-apocalyptic train where it's like there's so much just like murder and metaphor for for like you know, the global economic disparity, whatever. And after the end of the first episode, like this, this just, we don't feel good. Right yeah. Now. Damn. Right. We want to settle in with a glass of wine and, and binge three or four episodes of something that makes you like feel good for watching it. Now, see you two say this. Uh, meanwhile, I'm on my fourth watch of mind Hunter, So I am, <laughs> I am, oh, I need to get loving, through it. I like, well, those performances, darkness. man, that, that one Ed Kemper, Oh my god! Yeah, on that show, I remember. I haven't watched the series all the way through, but I remember watching the first two or three episodes and, and thinking that guy's great. But see, this is this is this is my. I mean, I think and look, people go back and forth. We all need what we need in these moments, and that's real because, uh, as I have said several times, we are living in active trauma. What can we do to protect ourselves? You know, secure your perimeter. All this shit. So you can you you know whatever you need to watch to do that, watch it. I maybe I'm crazy. I find that shit cathartic. I am crazy, but I find that shit cathartic. <laughs> like I find I, that's why honestly, Alex, when we started this pandemic, 
I you we did so Sasha we did an episode on uh, horror movies. I chose Hereditary. It was the worst movie to watch at two a.m. Now Sasha, you, I, <laughs> have you seen Hereditary? Have you seen? No, it? never. Good. It is it, it it's. I mean, it truly. Spoiler alert, everyone. If you don't want to hear spoilers, uh, don't listen to this. The 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 one of the last shots of this, just to put it in context, is Tony Collette, brilliant actress, sawing off her own head with piano wire. That is that is where we're at in Hereditary. Oh my god! It's it's brutal, but it's I mean it's brilliant in front of her son, in front of her son, in front of her son no, while her you. while her son is getting possessed by the devil. Um, it's a whole thing, but it's poetic. It is very poetic. It's a, it's actually about trauma. Um, but that shit is so like I I I hated horror movies starting this pandemic. Now I fucking love them. I cannot get enough of them. I and I, I don't know what that is. Like it, maybe maybe I've truly snapped, guys. But like I love a good horror movie right now. I'm watching The Ripper. I hate cr- like true crime. I hate that shit. But I'm watching The Ripper right now, y'all. The Ripper. Interesting. I wonder what that up. is. Like I, I, I would like to see the numbers for the last year right. about, about genre and what people are really sticking to. It's so true. It's so true. You know it's, what what we need because usually like what comes out is a product of where we're at, right? Like hor- and horror movies especially tend to reflect that right our our cultural yeah. fears and and all of that so i'm curious about what what people are watching have been watching and i'm curious about what comes out in the next year or two years three years to like n- get at people right and get under people's skin I don't know. Sasha, definitely if they, sasha if they do a bridgerton uh uh spinoff in america you gonna be on that show yeah you're gonna for do sure it? That's, that's like, like what you need to know about me is that i'm pretty sure i was supposed to be born into royalty <laughs> Oh my god! So let's talk about. That, can we break? Let's break that down. What, 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 let's go I deeper. really feel like I was meant to be born into some sort of wealth and position and royalty in society. Um, what are you doing with this position and wealth? Like, what is what is your? Oh, nothing. I'm worthless. I just eat and drink and socialize. <laughs> honestly, like I don't have any grand. Like, there's no dreams of like you know what mark I make on society. I am one of the basic bitches on the meat market. <laughs> You're just That's a dream. That is. I mean, that is yeah. one dream. Yeah. Do, do, do let me ask you this. Um, if you like, uh, if you are a Bridgerton character, yeah, who are who are are you the Duke? Are you like who are you, Sasha? Do you mean? Ooh, I would love the Duke. Is that's interesting now? See, you who see am I? I'm- you know, you know, I'm I'm Lady. I think I believe her name's Lady Danbury. Lady, I have to, I need to look it up. She's like the black woman who has raised, um, basically raised the Duke in the absence of his mother, okay. and and the also the chosen absence of his father. Uh, okay. So she sort of coached him through his stuttering. She helped him through his schooling. She's the person who's just had his back, looked out for him. Um, he is you know her son like her son and and she is like a mother figure to him what i love about her character is she is very well to do obviously she's high up in society and she hosts this um women's sort of club and uh she does invite the dukes uh she invites daphne the the wife the woman the Br- daphne bridgerton mm-hmm. the pearl of the season she invites her to this party and Daphne thinks she's going to a tea party and she walks in and these women are drinking and playing like and gambling and talking and you know sort of doing she sort of hosts their side of society which I I do think would be probably something I would do I would have the sort of women's um club if you will that was thought to be tea time but was really just us getting drunk and manipulating the men of the society now, t- now let's 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 even let's even extrapolate from this because Sasha. So, so Alex, one of the first things uh, uh, that I want I want listeners to understand about Sasha is this is a, this is actually a theme that I've noticed with <laughs> Sasha mm-hmm. um, is is the the covert the <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think how to describe. It. So, uh, in context, one of the first things that uh, that me and Sasha ever talked about as our friendship, but it was a show uh-huh. called Chaos. We talked yeah. about having a show called Chaos. And Sasha, what what, what would happen in the plot of that show? What would the, what so was Chaos that show? is billed and uh, and advertised as my fifty four below debut solo yeah. show in New York City. Yeah, every chorus girl does one, and I it Shut would up. be mine. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you are not on broad. You are not. <laughs> 
a Broadway dame until you have held your own 54 Below Joe's Pub, you know, show. Loose lip sync ships. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the warm ups you do before your show. That's right. That's Every right. core scroll does them. Um, so I, it would be billed as that. We do, you know, a nice little photo shoot for the gram. We do a little promos, maybe some flyers to pass around your theater. Yeah. And um, a couple of maybe now, you know, I do like an Insta Live convo about it, you know, just really hype it up. And people would come to the show. We'd be totally sold out. People would come to the show. And, um, you know, as as the show begins, the lights would go off. And then you would just hear the door slam and lock. Slam shut. <laughs> and what Slam happens? Shut and lock. What happens? What happens after that? Chaos. Chaos. Well, that's like a fire hazard. Chaos. I'm <laughs> you gonna don't... tell you. It's told. Yes, it is a fire. <laughs> Let me tell you what doesn't happen. A concert. <laughs> that's precisely not what's gonna happen. <laughs> what's was... not gonna happen is uh is a solo concert. <laughs> it felt. It. I remember you saying there was darkness. There's a lot like no lights. No Nuts. lights. Well, People it cuts it. off. Lights cut off. Yeah. Water guns. You yep. get soaked. Super soakers. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know. Some are filled with water. Some are filled with like Nickelodeon slime. There may yes. be some silly string. Yes. And then as the lights come up, confetti glitter pops off. And I'm just on stage saying welcome as if nothing has happened. Yeah. So welcome you tar everyone. The, you tar and feather the audience with glitter. Listen, I would Water never and tar slime and feather and glitter. <laughs> Tarring and, and feathering is an act of racial aggression, and I would never participate in that. But I will put a sticky true. substance on a person and then cover them and with cover them glitter. In glitter. Yeah, it's, it's totally okay. different. <laughs> so here you are in the theater. They thought they were coming. It's, it's sold out. First of all, yeah, it's sold out. Right. Right. Sold, first performance sold out. Uh, after it's all over. Uh, yeah. you, you need to keep up the mystique. How do you keep them from getting on their phones and telling everybody like you're about to get glitter bombed? Right. It's okay. a one night only. It's a one night only event. This okay. is one night uh, only. <laughs> it's one night only and or the next night is actually a concert. Or better yet. <laughs> better you, yet. You I, just don't know what you're going to get on a given night. <laughs> I, I even got you one better. You show up in your raincoat and there's a concert. <laughs> yeah, everyone comes the next day ready to get slimed. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> Sasha, I'm like, your... don't tell me not to live. <laughs> Sasha, what, this is my question. This is actually my question. What is your set list? What are you singing? <laughs> what are you singing um, for this? Because... I'm singing Angel of Mine. Okay. If I hear one dun 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 <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I'm just getting. That's just gonna play throughout. I love it. I it's love gonna it. be the intro to every song. Every song. Every song. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love I'm that. I'm singing the chicken that. dance. Da na 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 da na 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 da na 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 na. Right. Did we all. Did we all clap? I clapped. Yeah. I snapped. You Chaos. Snapped that. Chaos, chaos. Well, that's that's really <laughs> wonderful, Sasha. I'm really glad that you have that in your back pocket. I'm really glad that you can yeah. on that. Because, um, you know, look, times are tough. Do you know what I mean? Like, and we're gonna really need to innovate yeah. in the in the in the new the new era of Broadway. So I think that's what really people great. aren't gonna pay two hundred dollars for a lie anymore. For a lie. Alex, we were I remember on... being like like four or five and my dad took me to see <laughs> Blue Man Group and the experience I had sounds very similar. Wait, you know, already being doing a little this? child. Oh, you know, I think, well, they drop like toilet paper from the ceiling. Yes, I mean, it's, they do. It's, it's not this, but like to a oh. little kid, this is what Sa it feels like. Sasha, I actually, I didn't want to ruin this for you, but there was a ride. This will bring it back to something Alex knows about. There was a ride called uh, Alien Extra Extraterrestrial ter Encounter uh -huh. at Disneyland or Disney World. <laughs> And the and I'm gonna I'm gonna describe what this ride is to you so that you can understand that you've actually stolen their ride. You oh. uh, you go you you go into a, a, a an auditorium, 
And the idea is, you know, it's like you're on an alien planet and they're going to introduce you to like a new, like the, a new technology. They have teleportation technology and you sit in these chairs and they're going to, and the, the president of the company is going to teleport in uh, from space and, and, and come talk to you. And it's the first time anybody's ever teleported a live animal ever. Uh, what ends up happening is that in the teleportation, they actually don't hone in on the president's signal. They hone in on that of like a giant wigged devil creature and oh. so when the smoke clears in this in the teleportation cylinder is this creature he's staring at you all of a sudden there's a huge crash glass shatters everywhere lights go out and your next i'd say 10 minutes are just like you are literally strapped to these seats nothing ha like you don't move anywhere but like like uh, th these things happen. You you feel the creature breathing on your neck. You feel oh, you know you what? I've totally been in this ride. I've totally oh, done this. Yeah, it's 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 maybe that's well, where I'm, my pl where that's where the idea came from. It came from like, this. Yeah, yeah. It was better so, itself. It, it came psyche. from going to yeah. It came from going to theme park rides where they turn off the lights <laughs> and give you a bunch of sensations in the seats. That's what you want. They that's also do that at a Bug's Life at Animal Kingdom. They absolutely do that at a Bug's Life. <laughs> In Animal Kingdom, <laughs> they also do that. It's now now the ride is called Lilo and Sti Lilo, oh, Stitch's Great Escape. No longer, it's now gone. But oh. uh, he burps, he burps hot dog in your face. It's not fun. It's not oh. a good ride. It's not a good. Does ride. it smell like hot dog? It smells like hot dog. It's really not a good ride. Uh, oh, and I'm cool. glad it's glad. No, it's not cool. It's not cool. <laughs> it's is it's the worst ride on property. And I'm glad it's gone. You hear me? I'm glad. Uh, but <laughs> but Sasha, that's I I can't wait. I think people are really gonna be excited for your. Uh, for your show i think this yeah. is a, a really great great thing um it's gonna be great now that i've got that hot dog smell that takes it to a next level i gotta get some smells in the show you have to now guys i want to point out we are at about the 45 minute mark and we have <laughs> we have yet to talk about anything having to do with movies so here's what i'm gonna say this is this is where we will stop this episode we're stopping it now it's done okay and we're gonna we'll pick up hot dogs <laughs> Hot dogs. Hot and dogs, hot dogs, hot dogs. That's the marker. <laughs> little Justin. Little Justin. Little Justin.